Okay, welcome back to the DART. This is the language samples tour. And today we are on comments. How exciting, comments, code that does nothing. <laughs> it's probably the easiest to maintain. It does right? nothing but can reveal everything. Can reveal everything, that's right. Okay, so let's, I guess, start out for um, someone, let's say this is their first day, they're getting into programming and they're watching this video for some reason. Um, so they'll probably start out with something like that, print hello world. Okay, that's all valid Dart, pretty sure. Now, if you had that in there, let's say twice, but you wanted to print hello Jim. Now, what you can do at the beginning of the line is put two little uh, forward slashes and that comments it out. It's ignored by the compiler, by the analyzer. And the only line that prints is hello, Jim. Um, in your development environment, there is a shortcut that's really nice. So you don't have to put your cursor at the front of the thing and manually type the two forward slashes. On Windows, it's probably control forward slash. And on Mac, it is command forward slash. And that when you do that, it just toggles it. See, I just hold it down. <laughs> it's just toggling back and forth. Pretty cool, huh? Very convenient. Now, there's another way. Um, it says, uh, dark comments usually start with two forward slashes, okay? Um, that's what we just showed, that's a one line comment. Let's get back to this triple line, uh, this triple forward slash thing in a second, because I also wanna show these. Now, I think these comments, this style is just like um, JavaScript, is that correct, Jim? Pretty much all languages use the double slash and the triple slash for commenting. Mm -hmm. I think Ruby is- Same thing in different. Java, same yeah. thing in C Sharp, same thing in JavaScript, same thing so in TypeScript. It's the C, the, C, the C family of languages, is that correct? Um, correct. So I'm just printing out a whole bunch of strings. If I want to comment out all of them, I can say forward slash star, and then it looks, when is the next star forward slash? And so that's how you kind of terminate it. I actually do it after one of these. Okay, so it's like a, it's like the bookends on a book, a bookshelf, keeping your books in mm -hmm. line. Okay. Block comments. Block comments, thank you, Jim. That's a good way to, to call it. Um, yeah, so this is a one line comment and multi-line or block comments, like Jim was saying. Now, um, so this is, this is just the mechanics, how comments work. They just let your, your code run um, without running the stuff that's commented. Is that, is that fair, Jim? Sure. Let's say you what? have multiple mm -hmm. lines of code and you only want to run a certain portion of them rather than removing them, you just comment them out. Mm -hmm. And once you want to run those code, comment it out, you comment them back in. Yeah, nice. Um, one of the things you can't do with this multi-line comment is you can't toggle it. Oh, you can actually, holy shit, I didn't know that. Nice. <laughs> you see that? So let me command Pretty Z. Cool. We'll get back here. So I guess, I guess this program DartPad is like an IDE um, in the sense that when you highlight it all, command forward slash takes out the comments. But if I do it again, it's not smart enough to know, hey, let's make this a block comment. And that's why I put in the, the line comments for each of them. Um, I think usually I see, I see these in code where people have commented something out like this. Um, 
I'm more likely to see the block line comments whenever um, here's some helpful text to explain the real code, right? So it's something like, like mm -hmm. that. I've seen those before too. Oh, look at that. So I actually have to do something like that. <laughs> okay. And then it's kind of like auto formatting for me. Uh, and it automatically put these these new stars in uh, each time I went down. I don't know if that's because it thought this was a bullet or if it knows like, hey, let's make this look pretty uh, as, as like multi-line comments. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, I want to show something in the IDE actually for Android Studio. Okay, so here's something I was working on. Now, the other day I opened a pull request and one of the individuals who was reviewing it, um, I had put in after one of the lines, a comment like this. So this is something like this to do refactor this later. So there's two things going on here. You have an inline comment. So this code will run size box height 8.0 but then it should ignore this comment after. Uh, and he was saying that um, it actually caused his program not to compile, which was interesting on his computer, but on, on mine, it, it still worked fine. So I don't, I don't know if that was an actual issue or not. Um, you may wanna be aware that that could be a thing. Um, otherwise I think it's okay to do something like this. That's very strange because in yeah. all the programming language that I'm used to, we're freely able to put comments after the line mm -hmm. and the compiler will um, proceed accordingly as if yeah. um, it was a regular comment above the line or underneath the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I didn't actually see the error message. It was just a comment in a PR, so it, it, it may have been correct or it may not have been. Um, he's using a different IDE as well. Um, I'm using Android Studio. Uh, Looking the at the other... screen right now, as you guys can mm -hmm. see, Android Studio is smart enough to put automatic comments after each of the commas to yeah, let but... you, the developer, know uh, what widget um, uh, the ending parentheses and comma is part of. That's right. Um, it's kind of cool. Um, I wasn't used to that whenever I first um, was doing this because like, it, I think they do it because there's so many indentations in, in widgets. If you're not using that like velocity X library where you can chain method calls. Um, if you're doing the, the key value sort of like property uh, notation, which is what all widgets have, like you can get very nested and it's, it's kind of overwhelming sometimes to be like, all right. <laughs> Where does this line it start and where does it end? Like you got to have all your your commas, even your your ending commas, like just so. Or when you save it, Android Studio is going to reformat it, right? Um, so I'm going to put that back in actually. Um, so I yeah, often add... find myself having to open Flutter Inspector on the right side of the mm -hmm. Android Studio just to see the layout from top to mm -hmm. bottom of all the widgets. Yeah. Yeah, that's smart because it is, it can be overwhelming, but th this is the helpful bit. So like, I can't highlight this comment. It's not actual code. It's just Android Studio using the comment feature to make it look like an inline comment. Like this is where this widget ends for outline input border, right? Which is this guy. So um, you're able to identify that, that entire block. Um, act actually, sorry. That's one there, that's one there, that's one there. Um, they could have used- For you some folks other... out there, uh, Aaron prefers to use Android Studio. I prefer to use VS Code. Within VS Code text editor, when you write Dart and Flutter code, it still add those automatic comments after the comma as well. It does the same, nice. It's good to have that consistency um, in some, some regard. Um, I was listening to a podcast with uh, Randy Schwartz yesterday, Jim. It's the, um, I couldn't find it in Stitcher, but I found it in the Apple podcast app. It's uh, 
It's All Widgets Flutter Podcast by Hillel Quorum. Um, I've heard and, of it. And Hillel, he was, uh, or him or Randy, one of the two, we're talking about like how much more performant Visual Studio Code is, or VSC, I think he calls it. Um, and so like, I don't know, I might be drinking the Kool-Aid soon, but I, I did like how like, I mean, this is how Android apps are developed, right? In Android Studio, or can you also develop native Android apps in VS Code these days? Back in the day when I um, developed personally, only developed Android apps, I've only ever used Android Studio. I, mm -hmm. Back then, ugh, back then, I don't even think VS Code even existed all those years ago. Yeah. So one of the comments the, the, the guy on the uh, podcast said was, in the beginning, Android Studio was fine, but as the application grew, it just became very memory intensive. Um, so anyways, back to comments. So does VS Code have this feature where if you type a comment with this special to do, um, it kind of highlights it. It's a special IDE, like the, the, the coding program you're using to write your code it has this built-in functionality where if you know how to use these, these keywords, it'll highlight it and not just be uh, gray. VS Code has to do as, as well. Mm -hmm. What are some others? What are some other special comments in, in the IDE? Isn't there one like Mark? This is a comment. Now, I think I'd have to go to Android. Um, Studio special comments. Let me see. What are all the comment tags available in Android Studio? Um, so there's to do and fix me. So that's, that's what it sounds like. To define a to do pattern. And then there's ways you can like filter, like you can use the IDE to say, show me all my to do's. Um, and by default, I think, I think to do's like these comments are checked into Git unless your IDE has a way to somehow detect that, um, hey, when I do a git add, ignore all the to-do comments, maybe. I don't know. Otherwise, it becomes part of your source code. Um, yeah, so I think they had to like fix me. Yes, do it now. Cool. So you have to-dos, cool. you have to fix me. Um, it's also nice that the special comments are highlighted in a different color than the usual gray mm -hmm. yeah and it doesn't look like anything else in the code like i don't have any other uh you know different color code with that same color um yeah it looks i guess it's just to do and fix me i know in xcode they have this thing um <clears throat> And this is for iOS development. There's a way to, um, yeah, this is what I tried earlier. You can make a mark. Um, <laughs> it's funny, whatever language this person used in their post, um, it also identifies to do as something special. <laughs> so maybe the default is Java when you just put triple tick marks, you know? Um, yeah, so, so in Xcode Studio, you can make a mark, and that's a way to, um, to like organize, uh, it's like a bookmark um, in your code, so you can find stuff easier later, organize code. I did want to point out one thing I just remembered is, so like in, um, in Flutter, I've noticed, like if I have a bunch of properties, so let's say we have a string name. Let's say we're initializing that property. We have an int called like count. We have a bunch of properties that we're, we're defining on this class. I like to group those together so that like visually, um, I know where my methods start, like my build method on this class, where my properties are. Maybe there's callbacks later or something. 
there is a way, I think you highlight it. Um, man, I forget the shortcut now, but where is, <laughs> surround with? Yes, there it is, okay. Um, that didn't give me, okay, it's, so it's, what button is, that's option command T. Okay, option command T. Now this is, this is great. So there's two ways you can surround this with comments. Uh, you can do region, end region. So I can say, um, oops, undo, delete. Ah, funny you should undo. mention region. Region also exists in Visual Studio when creating C Sharp and .NET apps. Nice. So it does the same thing. It does a, a, a whack whack region. So the cool thing about this is, is I could have typed this out myself, right? I can say slash slash region um, methods, and then um, at the end, close it off with a region, right? Save. Is it going to do Ooh, it? It has to be in region. Oh, in region. Thank you. Yeah, I missed that. Okay, but as soon as I did that, like watch this little folder thing over there. As soon as I put that, it like auto saves and recognizes, hey, I can collapse these things together. So the cool thing is, is it creates this, um, I don't know if people can see that when I hover over it. So then I can collapse all my properties and all my methods like this. And then I can kind of look through my class um, and organize code this way. So this is a code comment per the Dart standard, like this is a Dart code, but because I've done slash slash region like this and slash slash in region, now I'm taking advantage of Android Studio. Um, so I use Android Studio, Jim uses Dart. If we're working on the same project together, this is going to be added into um, our Git source code. So let me show you, um, Git diff. Okay, down, 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 down. Okay. Yeah, see, it, it's including it as source code. So that's gonna be checked into our code. So when Jim pulls this down, it's gonna be on his machine. Now, what would be really nice is if, um, if VS Code would also have the same feature for Jim, right? Otherwise, he just has like these extra comments that are in the way. Um, so I think, Jim, you're gonna find out, right? Yeah, I'm gonna to have to look into that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this one for the properties. There was another thing, command option T. Um, you can do, and see, so that first one said editor fold comments. Um, that's, oh, oh, sorry. That was region in region. This next one I'm going to do is editor fold comments. Um, so it, it does the comment, the inline comment again, but it does more of what it looks like an HTML tag. So I have an editor fold property and then a description. Okay. Um, another thing is I can, I can collapse it, right? So when I do collapse it, it takes that description and it displays it. Um, but maybe there's somehow like, I don't, I don't know how, how to use these editor folds or what, in what case you'd want to do that. Um, something that would interpret this tag and do something with it. Um, maybe, maybe you use these whenever your team is using different IDEs, but it's programmable like VS Code is, right? So you could, you could make use of this and say, VS Code, when you see this, do the same thing as Android Studio. <clears throat> maybe, maybe that's the one we need to use. So we'll have to figure that out because um, it's, it's a good way to organize code. It's like, where do I put my code in this file? Uh, this is a good way to organize that. We're gonna have to look into this because I'm not familiar with this editor fold. Yeah. Um, yeah, there might be a way in Visual, uh, Visual Studio to do a surround with. You wanna see? Um, surround with. Um, control K or Control S. 
typing the name in a code snippet. Hmm. I was trying it right now and that doesn't seem to be the default shortcut for hmm. my Visual Studio code. Um, it looks like you might have to have this package surround with. Ah, like that's nice. package. So this is, this is something where programming experience comes in. So I kind of like looked at this and I thought, hey, that just looks like a package name. So for an, an, a new coder, you know, if you see something like that, that I mean, why would they hyphenate that? Oh, it's a, it's a proper name to round with. Oh, I just realized that we're looking at the Visual Studio full-blown ID rather than the VS Code text editor. Oh, okay, so that's different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. So that, that might be a thing to think about. But yeah, uh, a lot of ways to use code. comments with Dart, regardless of if you use VS Code or Android Studio. <clears throat> yeah. So we just went pretty deep on one line comments, the IDE, multi line comments. Um, and then there's these triple ticks. It says, this is a documentation comment used to document libraries, classes, and their members. Tools like IDEs and Dart doc treat doc comments specially. Um, so I think like this, and even this entire website is written with these comment things. Like, I think if we found the source code, there would actually be like three comments in front of this. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. So sometimes in Android Studio, again, I'm like, where is, where is the stateful widget defined? So I can either command click or command B in Android Studio, and it takes me to the source code. Okay. Um, so it opened, this is my things in the way. This is framework.dart. This is where stateful widget is defined. Um, and you'll notice we have these triple tick marks. Okay. Now I bet if I search for this string of text in Google, exactly, it'll pull up the Dart docs. Maybe not. Ah. API.flutter.dev, stateful widget class, there it is. Is what I wanna show is this code here that you're, that you're reading, this entire site is generated by this. So the authors of the documentation, they wrote it like this, and then they have a, a program or whatever that makes their website, and it uses these special triple tick comments to produce um, this website. I think that's the case. I might be talking out of my, you know what, Jim, but um, they, they, use, they use the triple tick to um, especially make this stuff. Flutter can be used for web as well. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. In fact, to prove their point, I would imagine the Dart creators would want to utilize Dart to create their website just to prove that it can be done. Can you imagine if other people found out, oh man, we have this great Dart slash Flutter framework, but your documentation website was created in React or Angular? <laughs> if they did it that way, that would look bad. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think Dart is on GitHub. It's like an open source programming language, right? Um, it is. So you have design of the language. Um, so let's see. Yeah, pub dev. Oh, oh this is the, the package library. Um, do they have dub, dub, dub? Yeah. So here's the Dart website. Um, 
it is written in, Dart is only 10% of the website, Jim, unfortunately. <laughs> right. So if you, if you find a, um, like, I think the first day I was doing Dart, I found um, an error in, in one of the documentation is either Dart or Flutter. And if you want to submit a, a patch, um, you know, a contribution through a pull request, you have to be able to like check this out locally, make the change, push it back up and open a pull request. Um, I think that the examples are probably in, um, oh, that's YAML. For example, null safety.dart. Um, hey, look, doc region, in doc region. That's interesting. Okay, maybe we're getting in too deep here, but um, I wanna see if that works. Doc region, I don't remember seeing something like that. What is it? Pound, oops. Simple example, did they call it? No. And they say in doc region, so it's like after the route. Yeah, I don't know what they're using that for specifically. But again, that's Perhaps another- it's a special way to define your own comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely something some things there where they're using that um, away. Uh, th there are also other comments sometimes I think in, in Dart itself, like this one, ignore for file. Um, Cause I know in like, and even in Ruby, um, there's like a top level comment. Like sometimes you'll see comments that are actually interpreted. Have you seen that? Am I imagining something? Um, I'm unfamiliar with Ruby. Let me let me see. Um, I'll open Rails on GitHub. My understanding of programming languages in general: a comment is a comment is a comment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So here's what's at the top of a lot of these uh, Rails files: frozen string literal true. It's a comment. So does, is this ignored? No, I think this is actually interpreted. I didn't copy. Ah, okay. I, I know what you mean now. Um, like it's a comment, but I think it's actually like interpreted and like it's a magic comment, at least in, in RELs, right? Oh, they call it a magic comment, yeah. Aaron, if you remember in HTML pages, at the very top of that file, you always put in um, angle braces, doc files, HTML. And mm -hmm. it's a comment, but it's one of those magic comments in that sense. Right, right. So Dart could have something like that. So, so we may or we may not, while well, we're on the, the, the idea of comments, um, there could be something like magic comments. Like, like that's a thing in other programming languages you should know about um, that it's going, it's gonna see the comment. It doesn't just ignore it. The, the SDK or the, the program running the code could be smart enough to say, hey, if the comment has this special, uh, you know, text after it, whatever it says, um, we, we can make it such that it does something special. Um, and it's just a way to do that versus like um, creating a module or a package, you know, an external library where you have to like call in magic library dot do this thing and put it in each file. That's just different strategies, what it sounds like, right? <laughs>